an issue for games. Laura Parker is an avid gamer and online journalist for a gaming website. A lot of people take these violent scenes out of context and say, well, you know, this is blood, dismemberment and postmortem abuse and drug use. That must mean that the whole game is made up of these elements. And that's often, very often not the case at all. MA15 Plus is the highest classification rating for video games. Australia is one of the few countries in the world not to have an R rating. Games with excessive violence, drug use and adult themes are refused classification and banned from sale in Australia. This is a form of censorship and it's basically the government telling us uh, that we are not allowed to play uh, video games that everybody else in the world is allowed to play. The kinds of games that are being refused classification are only being refused classification because the gore is excessive, tendons are visible, decapitations are possible, bodies pile up. That's the only thing that we're missing out on in Australia. The body which represents the interactive games industry is pushing for an R classification. We kid ourselves if we say without an R18 a big wall goes around Australia and pre prevents the games being here. That's simply ridiculous. The games are here, it's being pirated, it's being downloaded and it's being, you know, imported by mail order. Ron Curry doesn't believe an R18 plus rating will open the floodgates to more violent games. The classification guidelines say if there's extreme violence in a game or gratuitous violence, it'll be refused classification anyhow. So it's not all of a sudden we're going to see a whole bunch of games that currently are refused classification coming in. They'll simply still be refused classification, and we're happy with that. Games. I think parents do need to be informed about how severe the content can be in some games that are coming out today, which is equivalent to a lot of R18 movies. If the industry in Australia really wants parents to have more information, it's pretty easy for them to do. That is, they could create a rating system um, that would emphasize what the content is and would put warning labels to warn about content that has been shown to be harmful, much like, at least in the United States, cigarette packages. How many of you play computer Psychology games like professor Nintendo Craig Anderson of Iowa University case. recently published a study in the prestigious American Psychological Association Bulletin analyzing 130 research reports on over 130,000 subjects worldwide. Exposure to violent video games has now been shown to uh, increase the likelihood of aggressive behavior in both short-term and long-term contexts. Professor Anderson's research is being used by child advocates here in Australia to oppose the R rating, but the industry questions such findings. We've looked hard and talked to a lot of um, academics on that issue because there's been a lot of debate and we'd love to stand up and say here is some undisputable facts that say there's not. Conversely, we haven't been able to find anyone who could stand up and, and say, you know what, here's some undisputable facts that it is. At the moment the jury's out. All state attorneys general need to agree to an R classification for it to become a reality. South Australia's Attorney General Michael Atkinson is the only one publicly opposing the R classification. He's become the focus of a concerted online and real world campaign by angry gamers. Michael Atkinson was unavailable to be interviewed for this story, but sparked controversy when he spoke on ABC2's Good Game program last month. I had a threatening note from a gamer shoved under my door. I feel that my, uh, my family and I are more at risk from gamers than we are from the outlaw motorcycle gangs uh, who also hate me. Firstly, we don't condone that sort of behaviour. It's ridiculous, it's stupid and it's counterproductive. The Federal Attorney General's Department is now considering the 55,000 public submissions it received on this issue. It's not about a small group of gamers with bloodlust, it's about everybody. We are all affected when a game is refused classification, partly because we know we're being censored for no, for no good reason. It's one thing to say I want freedom to enjoy watching a depiction of something, uh, freedom of consumption if you like. But this is about simulating acts. 
do we want people to have the freedom to simulate gory, murderous acts day in, day out? Theatre Chaos with that report.